So likewise, uh, with the smart grid, there's lots of researchers and others interested. So they have each uh, has his own definition. Um, as I mentioned, many people just focus on the marriage of communications and power networks as being at the heart of the smart grid. Uh, we're very lucky in the U.S. that uh, in the uh, Energy Independence and Security Act in 2007, which was a major piece of energy legislation, there is in fact a definition of smart grid there. So if you're very bored, one thing you can do is go and look up that legislation and see the official U.S. federal definition of a smart grid. Uh, this. I uh, was very lucky actually, particularly uh, when the ARA legislation was passed in 2009. ARA is the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And it was under that legislation that much of the investment in the smart grid has occurred in the US. Uh, you know, about $4.5 billion total was spent under, uh, under that program. It was a five year program. It came out of the out of the recession and the desire to create some economic stimulus and uh, not really specifically to update and modernize the grid but uh, the grid was one of the big beneficiaries and it was very helpful that this definition existed in in legislation beforehand uh, if you go you'll see there's about 10 different properties that are listed as characterizing the smart grid it's a lot to go through. Uh, I like to categorize them uh, into three different main areas. One is better operation of the high voltage mesh grid. And uh, we've already discussed that a little bit. Uh, the use of new technologies, visualization, phasor measurements, many other things can make the high voltage grid more effective. And that's one area. The second area we've also discussed is related to markets. Historically, the power system had a very unbalanced market where the load was just considered something fixed and all of the operational and other economic analysis was pretty much focused on the supply side, trying to make this load, meet this load, sorry, at the lowest possible cost. And uh, this is what has driven a lot of the economics of the industry. And unlike other markets, the consumers are not playing a very active role. So making the consumers more active and making it more like a real market so that consumers are seeing the prices, the costs of the power that they're using uh, is another big area. Smart metering, demand response, uh, all kinds of pricing innovations, many different aspects to this, but overall, there is this uh, desire to make the electricity market much more active and uh, a market in which the consumers play a much bigger role. Then the third area under smart grid is disaggregation and more distributed systems. And of course, this is where microgrids uh, fit in. Rather than having this universal hierarchical system with one control center, uh, managing everything over huge regions to go to a system where there's much more dispersed local control and uh, as we've discussed already under microgrids we believe there's a lot of advantages of having a more dispersed system like this one of them being that these small systems are likely to be much more robust during some kind of natural disaster or other emergency and also more resistance to a cyber attack because they're likely to be heterogeneous and therefore very difficult to attack all of them simultaneously compared to a highly centralized system where you have just one control function to bring down.